I just want to start by um, thanking the Vikings organization. Um, really proud to be a part of it for as long as I have and into the future. Um, you know, Ziggy, Mark, and Lenny Wilf. Uh, you know, I love playing for their organization. Uh, and I, I really appreciate the work that uh, Rick Spielman, Rob Brzezinski, um, put into this deal as long as, as well as um, Athletes First and my agents over there. Um, I also have to say how much I appreciate playing for Zim over all these years and how much I learned from him um, <clears throat> playing in his defense and playing for him as a head coach, as well as every other coach I've had throughout the process. Um, and the teammates, you know, the teammates I've had have been phenomenal since I came in into Minnesota in 2012, and I've learned learned a ton from from a lot of them, you know, defense, offense, whatever. Um, and it to play as long as I have and to continue playing, it's not just an individual thing; it's it's a team thing. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm very very grateful to those that have helped me along the way. Extension that's probably going to allow you to play however many more years you want to. Was that like the top priority of like having a deal that you could, fit if you want to retire after four more years or keep going, that that was what you got? Yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's always hard to look too far into the future in the NFL. Um, you know, I think one of the things that has allowed me to have uh, pretty constant success is, is just fo focusing on the now and, um, you know, like, Contracts isn't something, it's not something I have worried about in my career and it's allowed me to just focus on playing football and those things tend to take care of themselves. Um, so I still have that approach, but you know, I, I understand the reality of, of getting older in the league as well. Um, but being, being able to be a Viking for my career is the most important. Be close to 37 when your existing contract that you just signed runs out. I mean, is it realistic to think you're still playing at 37 or even beyond? Do you, do you think about that or? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I I think when I signed when I signed in 2016, you know, you at the time you think, will I be able to play, you know, at a high level throughout this entire deal? So, uh, like I said, focusing on the now is is what has allowed me to play my best football. Um, so I'm just going to continue to do that. As you, as you think about how you're playing now, like, is it possible for you to evaluate how it compares physically to where you were at as a rookie? Like, I mean, you, you feel, how do you feel physically what you can do on the field compared to the beginning of your career? Yeah, I feel good. I mean, I think every player you ever ask, like, how do you feel? They're like, oh, it's the best I've ever felt in my career. Um, I tell people I felt terrible playing in college. Like, I felt like I was run down. I've, I, so I've always felt better in the league. Um, and I still feel that way. So, um, you know, my game is, I still make a lot of plays, still play at a high level, and I, continue, I plan on continuing that. I think that about is. I mean, you played more, like, you play more in the NFL, more games, and you've played longer. Why do you think that it was about, play, about feeling more run down in college? Um, I think I think it's more of a like an annual schedule. Um, you kind of get run down there. Where the pros, you're more of an investment to the organization. You need to take care of yourselves and um, be there on game day. You mentioned not worrying about contracts much in your career, but Zimmer said that this was a negotiation that lasted a while. Were you, I don't know, thinking about it, nervous at any point, wondering if it was going to get done or if and when it was going to get done? Yeah, I mean, you obviously think about it, but I don't. I don't get too wrapped up in it because I know it's not. It's not. I'm. I'm not negotiating a contract. I'm playing football, so all I can control is tackling and covering and doing those things. Um, so I'm just going to take care of my end of the deal, and um, let everyone else figure out the rest. How's it feel to be the second highest paid safety though in the NFL on a new money basis? Feels good. Um, you know, obviously it's 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 a great thing, um, but number one was was staying with the Vikings. You, uh, your five-year uh, Pro Bowl streak ended. Is there any incentive to you know get back to the Pro Bowl or at least some of those accolades that you are mm -hmm. way up in the upper echelon of safeties again? Yeah, I mean you, it's it's always nice to get those things. Um, you know, sometimes I don't know if they make sense, but. 
uh, I'll just keep trying to play at a high level. The rest can figure that stuff out. Do you take some pride, though, knowing the fact like of the type of deal you got when the safety position just over the last few years has been, I guess, maybe undervalued, where they're not getting paid as much as what you just got? Do you feel some pride in kind of carrying that torch that this is still a you know, lucrative position for guys in the NFL? Yeah, you know, and I think really when I came into the league, it was it was very undervalued, and it's you've seen it climb over the years, and um, you know I think just like every position, it'll it'll continue to climb, and you know I think you see how many playmakers there are at safeties, and how uh, safeties can impact ball games. Um, so it's it's important. Several teammates have returned and said that they thought maybe the grass was greener at another organization. Did you check with those guys as you were away and like? Uh, locking it in for another several years here? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't necessarily check with them, but that's something I've grown to understand over the years because um, I've seen it happen many times. And, you know, I talked to other guys around the league and what, what it's like in their locker rooms and things like that. And um, we've always had a special locker room. Uh, we have a lot of guys that are close, a lot of guys that look after each other. And, um, you know, that's, that's for a reason that's, you know, that starts at how you draft guys, how you scout guys. So um, it definitely helps to be a part of a group like that, where you look out for one another on and off the field. And so many of that, that core re remains in place, even though the rest of the secondary kind of changed this offseason too, right? Like ha having like that core constant with you, even though you know the rest of the defense in the back end is different now? Yeah, and um, the guys we added, we added a lot of talent, a lot of smart guys. Um, and we've we've all mixed in pretty well, um, so I'm I'm excited about about the group that we have and what we can do. But um, you can talk about you know your your age and how you feel physically and stuff. But what just keeps you loving the game? That keeps you wanting to come back and keep playing. Uh, it's just there's always a new challenge. Um, I'm a pretty competitive guy, so in the off season I end up trying to find other things to be competitive at and um, you know but football has always had a special place with me um, ever since I was a kid so you know if I mess up a play in practice I think about it for the rest of the day I watched the you know there's one yesterday or a couple days ago where um, you know you think about it for a while you watch the clip and um, yeah I think I'll always have that and I you know it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing sometimes. And then I know he played a different position, but with Terrence obviously playing into his late 30s, like, have you talked to him or did you learn anything from him when he was here just about prolonging your career? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I try to stay in touch with Terrence and um, watching him go about um, the seasons and the off seasons. Um, you know, I think he was 39 his last year playing corner, which I'm still not sure how he was able to manage that, but. Um, he really, he really took care of himself and knew what his body needed. It's not, it's not the same for everybody. It's not the same for every position. And he knew what, what he needed to get done on game days. Uh, so he prepared his body accordingly. Um, and so I've, I've definitely learned a lot from, from him in that regard. Um, sometimes like doing a lot of extra things might not pay off how you want it to. It might just become more of a burden. And that was kind of his approach to things. Um, he was always ready on game day. and. Um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll continue to reach out to him. Harrison, How bad? Harrison, what, is, what is it about Zim that you like playing? I'm sure he's not everyone's cup of tea as a player. Yeah, right? he's, uh, I think you nailed it. Um, but, um, you know, when he when he came in here, I had I'd played a couple years and, you know, I would played all right. Um, but when he came in, I, I kind of realized I didn't know that much about football. And I really learned a ton since he came in, not just like as a safety, but as a, as like kind of a, a, a broader view of how the game is played offensively and defensively, um, what the line is doing, what the linebackers are doing, how corners see things, um, how, how, how offenses are trying to attack certain schemes. Um, so just growing like knowledge of the game is something I noticed immediately, um, and he's, um, you know, he's always he's always stayed on me. He's always he's always kind of let me know that Darren Woodson was his guy, like his best safety. Um, so I've always kind of been chasing Woody in that regard, 
and uh, continue to do so. Uh, but he, uh, Zim, Zim keeps me honest, man. So that's, um, it's always been a pleasure to play for him. Harrison, in the years from when you started to now, how has the game, I guess, gotten more challenging to play safety? And how do you expect that to continue? Yeah, it's, it's definitely changed. Um, and it changes every year. Obviously, the, the, you know, the targeting rules um, are, are hard for safeties, I think, probably more than any other position, um, just because the angles and the speed and the reaction time. Um, that's something I'm always trying to get better at. Um, and I think I have gotten a lot better at it, but there's still some, still some things I can improve on in that area. Um, so I'd say, you know, I'd say that's the number one thing. Offenses, you know, spread you out a little more um, than they used to, but it's, it's always a constant, it's just always evolving and going back to what it was 20 years ago and then something new. Um, so you just gotta stay on top of it and kind of see what the flavor of the year is basically, um, which is also a fun aspect to it. Richard, how bad you kind of feel for Irv Smith? He looked like he was poised for breakout season and now he's been sidelined by that meniscus injury. Yeah, I don't know the, the full details, but um, you know, he's having a great camp and um, you know, hope the best for him and definitely you know, hope he gets back. When Zimmer gets here, uh, you know, feeling like he didn't know that much about football, is that kind of a weird thing to admit or realize after coming from a prestigious college, being a high pick, being in the league for a couple of years? Not really. Um, just because he's, he's always innovating new ways to, to get to the quarterback, to cover things. Um, and, I, you know, I still, don't, I still don't know everything now, so I'll, I'll continue to learn from him. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really just been, been a constant source of, of learning, yeah. Now that you've had a month or so of actually like seeing Cam Bynum in practice, like where has he made the biggest strides in changing from corner to safety? To be honest, I didn't watch a ton of him at corner uh, in college, but Did you have those tendencies though that you would notice like that's a corner trying to learn how to play safety for the first time. No, not really. I mean, he can cover well, so that's that, that's a good thing. Um, but he's a, you know, with with safeties, you have to be, you kind of have to be thinking about formations and communicating and constantly trying to help other guys out while getting yourself aligned. Um, and he, he's had that. You know, I think, I think the number one thing that young safeties kind of struggle with is the constant communication because it's every play, it's all the time. Uh, and you can't like, you can't rest on it. And, you know, things get chaotic during the game and you have to stay on top of it. So <clears throat> that's where, where young guys can grow the most. And he's, he's done a great job at that. He's always studying, I see him at lunch watching film on his own. Um, he's always asking questions. So he's he's definitely up doing some good things. Do anything to celebrate last night? Um, not really. Uh, my wife got me some cookies. So yeah, nothing crazy. <laughs> uh, I didn't have the mango ice last night, unfortunately. What's your go-to cookie? I like, I, I just like your basic chocolate chip and sugar. Um, yeah, pretty simple.